Today, we're going to walk through some of the concepts I taught uh, in a workshop during the Singapore Sketches uh, exhibition just uh, finished. It's called Color and Light. We're going to go through some of the concepts and then we'll get you to do some tutorials. Let's go. One of the things I'm trying to avoid uh, students to do is when they see shadows, they just throw black into it, a neutral tint or a paints gray. That is absolutely not the way to go. So let's go through uh, this uh, video, starting with color theory. So let me just show you some of the sketches I've done, uh, basically using some of the concept that I'm going to be describing, uh, you know, basically focusing on mixing of colors. All right. So that's the intention, using colors to represent light and shadow. But first, let's discuss the foundation uh, of color view. Uh, we will look at the three primary colors, uh, the three secondary colors, and the six tertiary colors. We won't cover the tertiary colors today, but you know, just for com uh, sim completeness sake, we will kind of just talk about it. The primary colors here are yellow, red, and blue. And if you mix them, you will get orange out of yellow and red, you will get purple out of red and blue, you get green out of uh, yellow and blue. Daniel Smith has a fantastic uh, beginner set. Uh, it's actually a very good set to start with. It doesn't have black or you know gray, uh, but it has the three uh, primary colors uh, each, sort of a warm and cool version of each color. And we we are going to talk about why that is important. The ability to think of a warm and cool of each uh, colors. Uh, you get uh, the dif different uh, colors uh, as described here. I won't name them, but you can read them on the screen uh, as such. Uh, well, you know, um, and in some ways, uh, they give you a complete uh, set of primary colors. In some ways, warm and cool of the colors uh, has to do with uh, our understanding of the sun. Uh, color that are closer to the center point of the sun will be considered warmer and further away clearly would be cooler. And uh, as you can see, if you put the colors according to the color wheels here, and you put where the color of the sun roughly, you know, towards the orangey, yellow, well, orangey, reddish sort of color, uh, you can kind of put colors according to where they are warm and where they are cool. Remember, this is just a psychological feeling of the colors. And in some way, there's no scientific uh, description or setting if you like. So it's really just to see colors and they're all relative. In other words, every color is relative to another color. And if it's in the same family colors, let's say yellow, uh, they could have a warmer or a cooler version of the color. All right, if you were to swatch the Daniel Smith colors, they will somehow end up like this uh, in this arrangement where the cooler colors like Hansa yellow light with phthalo blue, which are the cooler version of the colors, will be closer to each other than let's say uh, the new Gamboge, which is a warmer version of yellow, it will be closer to red. And the French ultramarine, which has a bit of red in it, will also be closer to the warmer side of blue, closer to red as well. As you know, I emphasize a lot on seeing in uh, most of my tutorials. I really want you to focus on how to see the world better and observe better. In this case, we want I want you to see colors in light and shadow better. So let's start with the yellow. I want you to observe the lit part of the yellow. It's lighter in value. In other words, it's, um, you know, in the scale of gray, it would be closer to white. Uh, and then the shadow part, it is still a yellow color, but it's turned brown. In other words, it has gone a bit brownish. And, uh, you know, it's the same color, except that the light hits uh, on the lit up part, and then the light does not hit. Uh, as much on the shadow part, right? So because of that, your eyes will see shadows. And if you look at just the banana, you will feel that the, actually the two colors will end up like this if you were to simplify it uh, in the two colors swatched. Okay, the next one is orange. And in the same way, you could see that the orange in uh, the light and orange in the shadow, they are still orange. Um, but you could see the characteristic of the orange is somewhat, uh, you get a richer orange if you like, or dirty orange. It's brown still, just like yellow is turned brown. But in this case, you could see that the orange, uh, you know, it has a bit of a richer uh, tone if you like. Uh, in that sense, 
uh, you know, orange and yellow, of course, they are closely related, but uh, you could see that your eyes can read that one orange is in the light and the other orange is in the shadow. Now, the next color is red. Um, as you can see, red here has uh, also in the same way, you know, bright red in light and uh, closer to a rich maroon sort of red in the shadow part of uh, the tomato. These are two tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, they're beautiful. And uh, as you can see, the eyes can read which uh, part of uh, the tomato is in the light and which part is in the shadow. Um, no confusion. So in some ways, if you are able to mix the two reds, you can depict shadow without necessary throwing black into the mix. Okay, let's go on uh, to the next color, purple. You would see that the lit part of the purple is lighter uh, in values um, and the, you know, the darker part, the shadow part of the purple uh, is still purple, but it's a, again, closer to the maroon sort of colors, uh, darker, richer tone, and uh, it's, uh, you know, very clear the light and shadow of the color. You notice that this is not about adding black to purple. Uh, I'll explain very quickly after this how you can achieve this effect of light and shadow using colors. But what I want you to note is this, that you know all colors so far that we have seen, without using uh, black, you your eyes see shadows when the color goes towards a certain sort of uh, you know, the opposites of uh, purple is, you know, yellow actually. So it's going towards a yellowy co color if you like. Um, and uh, it's a bit confusing at this point looking at the color, but very soon looking at the color wheels, you will understand what I mean. All right, let's try to wrap up uh, the other two colors left, the blue. Uh, same way, you could see blue in light, blue in shadow. Um, of course, uh, you could use two different colors. Um, that sort of mimic this hue, but uh, better off is that if you can learn how to mix from the first blue, the, the blue in the light, if you can find a way to mix it into the second color so that there's a bit of a unity between the two because you don't want uh, to have two different yellow, uh, blue that looks completely different from each other when you're trying to represent shadow of the first, right? Uh, and therefore, I think the idea here is to be able to see it. The second thing I'm gonna to try to teach you is to be able to mix it using your palette, okay? If that sounds good, we're gonna finish up with the next color and then we'll go on to mixing. Okay, the last color in the six colors that we're covering, three primary and three secondaries is green. You could see here in the same way, light and shadow of the color green. It starts with a very spring green, a very cool, uh, and uh, bright green if you like and uh, you would actually can also observe the shadow green it's the same color but it's just the way the light hit and reflect into our eyes we would see a very different green the light and the shadow uh, again it is how our eyes see where the lights are and when the shadow is and so in some ways uh, that's what I want you to observe when you're looking at the world around you. You're able to see shadows clearly and not to be fooled by your eyes and your mind telling you they're all the same, they're all just green. So you take a blob of green from your palette and you just smack on paper, right? That's not the intent. And I'm going to teach you how to mix uh, at the next sec section. So let's go. Okay, so I hope your palette can give you these uh, six colors. I hope at least you have three primary colors and you don't really need the secondary colors of uh, orange, uh, purple, and uh, green because you can mix from your, you know, basically your primary. I hope you have two of each of the primary because that will be ideal. Um, and in some ways, that is actually the best, uh, you know, palettes that you can have, uh, warm and cool of each primary and have the secondary mixed from your palette basically now at this point if you were to swatch the opposites uh, of each of these colors and you add a touch of that into the primary colors in other words if you add a bit of purple into yellow a bit of blue into orange a bit of green into red a bit of yellow into purple a bit of uh, 
uh, orange into blue and a bit of red into green. This is what you will get in the opposite uh, color and it's a bit of a shadowed color of the first. So this is what you get when you swatched uh, the color as I describe it. In other words, for yellow, if you add a dash of purple into it, you will get that sort of dirty yellow if you like, a richer, uh, you know, and it's sort of the shadow color. The reason why you want to use this, the base, the same color as a uh, starting point, is when you are sketching, you want to sketch uh, some, you know, the same object, let's say uh, a lemon, and the lit part of the lemon can be out of your palette, and then the shadow part can be the same yellow, with a dash of its complement color, in this case, purple. I won't describe all the colors, but I think you get the idea. For each of the color that is the brightest, if you were to add its complementary colors on the color wheel, you will basically get a shadowed version of the color. And this is how you represent the world in urban sketching and sketching in any scenario where you have light and shadow. And this is how you are now going to learn to mix it. Okay, that is the approach that I want all my students to take, not throw black or neutral pay, uh, you know, tint into it, but really mixing it with its complement, complementary color. Okay, so what is the complementary colors uh, of, you know, if you put all the colors in the color, color wheels like this, where the outer ring is the brightest, and uh, the opposites of it, in other words, if you look at yellow, the opposite would be the purplished uh, color, and then uh, for red, it will be green, you know, of course, vice versa, right? Uh, blue will be orange and so on and so forth. As you can see in this color wheel, the center of it is gray. So as you take a color, for example, yellow, and you move towards the center, it becomes gray. And as it moves progressively uh, towards the bottom, it becomes more and more published. And that's because um, there is basically two colors on the uh, outer uh, circle it is 100% pure colors um, but towards the middle it is a mix of the two colors uh, that comes together to form gray if you like but you can also observe that the colors when they move towards the center they become dull less bright and it becomes uh, sort of a shadow color of the outer rim though the thing I want you to notice is that the color itself uh, it's still recognizable as part of uh, the color. In other words, yellow is still seen as a yellow, but albeit a shadowed version of yellow. Okay, I'm going to tell you where this sort of uh, theory comes from. It came from faber Biren's uh, Principles of Colors. I've read most of his books. Um, and if you take a color, if you add white, in other words, if you tint it, uh, it becomes white eventually when you know all the pigments are full of white and there's no more color pigment in the mix. In the same way, if you add black uh, little by little into the color, it is shading. You shade the color until it finally becomes black. But how do you get gray? Well, you get gray, of course, by mixing white and black, but that's not intent. If you start from the color itself, how do you get gray? Well, you put complementary. It's direct opposite on the color wheel. If you put a little bit of the opposite uh, complementary color into the, the first color, it starts to tone. Eventually, it will become gray, just like the color wheel I showed you earlier. As you can see, the center of the color where it's 50-50 of both complementary colors, you will get gray. Now, a note on practice here. Not all colors are created equal. Some colors are more powerful, hence less pigment are needed to impact the outcome. So be careful, it is not 50% of the material that you throw into the mix, but it is 50-50 in terms of the outcome of the color. In other words, some pigments are more powerful, so you just need a bit of it. Some pigments are less powerful, you need a little bit more of it. So, but you can always see with your eyes in terms of the mix, the gray will eventually be the outcome when it is a 50-50 effect of the color on the mix. So I want to use red as an example. You could see that I've already swatched the first red, which is a bright red. And I'm now going to mix a little bit of its complement, which is green, into the mix. And I'm going to put down the shadowed version of red into uh, the color itself. You could see the two reds 
they are still in the red family which is very important you do not want the color to turn green you want it to stay red but you want it to be shadowed red and how do you do it you mix a little bit of the the complement into it and then make sure that you get the uh, you know shadow red into uh, the mix okay this video is getting too long i'm going to break it up and i'm going to leave you with a homework um I want you to sketch this uh, teacup, right? Uh, look at the various design in terms of shadows and light. The turquoise is a beautiful turquoise. It's a mixture of blue and green. So the trick here is to understand the complement of that color, right? On the color wheel. And then put that a little bit and get the shadow shape of that color. I want you to practice this and we will sketch together in the next video this little example. And for now, I'm going to leave you with this homework. You will find the photo of this uh, uh, in the description below. So for now, I'm going to leave you and uh, stay safe wherever you are. Peace out.